Yeah, also, I got stopped at first base on prom night. So <laughs> also just historically inaccurate. First base on prom night? You didn't get a kiss on prom <laughs> night? You didn't get anything? You went in for a kiss and got nothing? Welcome to Highly Questionable. I'm Dan Levitard. That's Pablo Torre and Mina Kimes. Let's get started. Thanks for translating uh, what the bases mean. How would you feel if the Seahawks signed Antonio Brown? All right, never mind how I feel. I want to hear how Mina feels about this because she's a Seahawks fan and because she's a crazy, rabid Seahawks fan because if you watch a game with her watching the Seahawks, she's a total lunatic. She loves that team. Their skill positions are so overwhelming. They are so good. And if you added Antonio Brown to that with a coach in Ted Lasso that I believe can handle these personality types because he's just friendly and kind and Antonio Brown wants to get back in the league, I like the idea of being able to see Russell Wilson play with those skilled guys. This feels like the first year he's had skilled guys. You add Antonio Brown to that, it would excite me, but there's that pending investigation. He kind of went Charlie sheen on us in public in a way that felt a little bit like mental illness i don't know what his status is mentally but i'd like to see him in a uniform with that team so i feel a little like a broken record on this um because it's a question that's come up many times over the last few months not always with the seahawks with other teams or any quarterback that works out with antonio brown but i believe it's worth rehashing the reasons He's not in the NFL because people seem to have collectively forgotten what went down. Setting aside the stuff with the Raiders, the drama, the taping of the coach, or the fact that, as Dan mentioned, there is still a pending investigation uh, regarding the allegations of sexual assault. Almost a year ago to this day, New England cut Antonio Brown after text surfaced reportedly from him to a woman who accused him of sexual harassment in which he intimidated that person, put her on a group text, included a photo of her and her children. So no, I don't want Antonio Brown on the Seahawks. Yes, it would be amazing from a football perspective, but I am not interested in seeing him on the football team that I cheer for. And I want to be clear, I'm not saying he doesn't deserve a second chance at some point or no punishment suffices. I am answering the question for myself, Mina Kimes, as someone who roots for that team. I do not want to see him on it. And I actually think it really matters what Mina thinks. I think it matters what Dan thinks. It may even matter what I think, because the reason why I think we keep on getting these stories of Team X is playing footsie with Antonio Brown far ahead of a signing that may or may never come. Every NFL team is still trying to figure out, are the waters okay enough for us to dive in on Antonio Brown for all the reasons and the complexities we just described? I mean, it is endlessly perfect that the reason Antonio Brown, on top of everything Mina just laid out, is not in the league is fundamentally because he cannot stop using his cell phone. Like that's the crime that he has committed that is most offensive to the NFL ethos. It feels like he's gonna go Charlie Sheen, Kanye West, whatever the metaphor is, he will do that again because that's who he is. But the reason we keep getting these trial balloons about whether the Seahawks are gonna sign him is because no one's quite sure, I think, where the line is yet. And Dan and Mina's answers, one after the other, kind of summarized exactly why these teams keep on playing footsie with each other in public. Should a team go out and trade for the totally heartbroken Ryan Fitzpatrick? All right, we got to get to the sound because we have the rare instance where we have something in the Hype Man Hall of Fame wheelhouse of Pablo Torre here. He is a hype man for Ryan Fitzpatrick. He has been a hype man for Ryan Fitzpatrick for 17 years. They were at Harvard together. He writes poems to him on ESPN Daily, a podcast you should <laughs> check out on every day, except that one when he's writing poems to Ryan Fitzpatrick. How dare you? And here's the heartbroken Ryan Fitzpatrick, selfish I might add, selfish taking away to a shine even though he's supposed to be the mentor look at him he's hurt here wow i was uh shocked by it you know it definitely caught me off guard and uh you know it was a it was a hard thing for me to hear uh yesterday just kind of digesting the news my heart just hurt all day i got basically got fired yesterday and then 
my day of work today consisted of me in Zoom meetings, listening to the guy that fired me and then, you know, locked in a, a spaced out room, uh, you know, with my replacement for four hours today weirdly humanizing see that's why pablo loves him right there because he gives you a little sliver of his soul pablo go ahead defend your man well it is really hard in total honesty here and this is what i was emailing with ryan yesterday about because it is really hard as a graduate of harvard to no, not no. come off as really? totally arrogant and unrelatable this is true you guys should agree with this i have been trying to do that for over a decade now i have failed at every turn ryan fitzpatrick is somehow this every man he has this yeah. television show from the place that no one should want to watch a tv show from as i say that while on a tv show talking about that place but nonetheless his career is a wild story arc and what he's doing this season i mean Mina, all of these advanced stats, right? EPA, CPOE, QBR. He is a top 10 quarterback in the NFL so far, leading a team or having just led a team into a playoff hunt. So Tua Tonga Bailoa does not merely have the pressure of being the franchise quarterback everybody needs him to be. He also needs to be as entertaining and as heartwarming and as relatable and as funny and as remarkable a dude as Ryan Fitzpatrick well, is. He'll just be better. By the way, he'll he just is. be a better quarterback. That's enough. Sure. When Fitzpatrick was benched, I tweeted jokingly that a team should trade for him. I said, actually, if the Cowboys trade for him, they would win the NFC East. That quote was then aggregated uh, into multiple articles. ESPN writer says the Cowboys should trade for Ryan Fitzpatrick. So I, I, I want to be clear here. Um, yes, if Dallas or Washington or whoever in that division traded for Fitzpatrick, who, to Pablo's credit, has been playing well, you are right about that, they probably would win the NFC East. But winning the NFC East this year is like being the most appetizing food item at a gas station. Your prize for being a lukewarm yes. hot dog yes. is getting yes. stopped by the Bucks or the Packers or whoever. Like, if I'm a Cowboys fan, I don't want to go 6-10 and 10 with Ryan Fitzpatrick and win the NFC East. I want to keep my draft picks and play for next year and muddle through. There's no point in trying to win this year, which is something we should all be living by now in 2020. But hold on, because Ryan Fitzpatrick was not merely – a surprisingly great quarterback these last two years. He was the Dolphins' leading rusher, right? He was the Dolphins' leading rusher last year. So, to me, this point, actually, let me judo that against you. Much like food at a gas station, he's going to give whatever NFC East team signs him a lot of runs. And that's going to be <laughs> yeah. really, really helpful. By the way, Mina, I told Pablo this yesterday. He did not know it about his beloved Ryan Fitzpatrick. More rushing touchdowns in the NFL than Bo Jackson. Yes. <laughs> so yes. More passing touchdowns than Terry Bradshaw and Kurt Warner. More total yardage. More total yardage than Jim Kelly. Like, the dude is incredible. Mina, far how more about, than you how about Pablo, Come though. on. What are we doing? What are how about we doing? Pablo with the emails? How about Pablo with the emails with Ryan with Fitzpatrick? He won't even tell us what they're emailing about. It's probably NSFW. Ryan Fitzpatrick saying, Stop being so weird about me. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, now since you made it all about you, I'm going to make this all about me. Ryan Fitzpatrick and I are from the same hometown. And if you go to the Wikipedia for Gilbert, Arizona, um, we are in the section of notable people. <laughs> what it's a very happened? small town. It's what a very small happened? town. Very I, small town. What's not very small is the narcissism of our two <laughs> panelists. Should the winner of tonight's Titanic Giants Eagles game be the favorites in the rancid, putrid, ignominious NFC East? All right, another river of sewage. I will not talk about this. Not since Jets Broncos on Thursday night football have we had such a terrible game. But look it's at Mina. Game. She's just That's dying to talk game. football. Pablo, you don't want to talk about this. No, Go ahead, Mina. God, Pablo, no. Pablo, you don't want to talk about this. First of all, Jets Broncos was an amazing game. And this could be an even better one. Yes, I know I just compared the NFC East to gas station food, but I will be downing that <laughs> lukewarm pizza tonight and enjoying every second of it. There is so much 
to watch for. On the Eagles side, Carson Wentz has actually been playing better. Travis Fulgham, undrafted Travis Fulgham, is looking like the surprise of 2020 along with Chase Claypool. He's been fed. I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't care. I'm going to keep going. Uh, the Eagles defensive line, one of the best in the NFL. Third best at stopping the run by our metrics. Top 10 pass rushing unit by just about any measure. And meanwhile, on the other side of the football, yes, Daniel Jones turns the ball over a lot. But Darius Slayton, electric. And that Giants defense has actually been surprisingly feisty this year. Leonard Williams has been playing well. James Bradbury is looking like the steal of free agency. I mean, guys. The playoff implications for this game are enormous! Enormous! I, is Pablo asleep? Are you? Did you literally just fall asleep while I was talking? This granola's been here for eight months. Coming up next on my Soul Stevie show. When you have a substitute teacher, they wheel in the TV. Kids today won't understand. And you watch, like, I don't know, a league of their own, right? Or remember the Titans. But this yes. substitute teacher was a fan of the cinema and showed the us the birds. The bir no, the, birds. the Hitchcock movie. Highly Questionable is presented by Samuel Adams from Boston with love. Savor the flavor responsibly. Part of preview game before we talked about the World Series. But we're not going to talk about that World Series being tied 1-1. We're going to look in the stands and see what happened with a fan celebrating a home run here. What happened? Wait, <laughs> Wait a minute. That's a mistake. Just, uh, that, that's enthusiasm that he's got carried did, away with. Did he, did he mean to throw the glove? Let's wait. Let's see if it was intentional. Watch it. I, no, I think he I, meant to. I think that is right there. Watch the hand, watch the flick, and then watch his own reaction. First off, great catch. Leaning backwards. It is a good catch. He meant to do it. I mean, but look, if you look at his face, do you know how hard it is to resemble the most stoned person in an outfield that also had Cody Bellinger patrolling it on that same night? <laughs> and you're not even talking about the spaced out things that we've gotten used to, which is two rows of fake fans, two rows of totally <laughs> faceless stoned fake fans. Do you question if Max should ride his scooter somewhere else? Okay, uh, Max is a human being, I'm assuming. How old is Max? Uh, not an animal, right? A human being. I never know with do you question. Sometimes. Yes. That's a child. Statistically speaking, in a do oh you question, God. very young. Always very young. <laughs> Well, let me tell you, that is horrifying. You guys laugh. I've had that happen to me. That is a mother bird protecting its area, not happy about something. And I've had that happen to me, and it's that kind of scary. Um, because you don't want, because you can't see where it is, and your eyes aren't where the bird knows where it's going. You don't know where the bird is. I've done that. I've done all of that except without the scooter. But do you know how brave you have to be to be that bird attacking Dan Lebetard? guy who has eaten how many birds in his life like 50,000 yeah, so birds, birds maybe you've so eaten and birds. that bird dares to attack you so many birds okay so this brought me back to a childhood memory that I had actually suppressed I think I was in third or fourth grade we had a substitute teacher normally when you have a substitute teacher they wheel in the tv kids today won't understand and you watch like I don't know a league of their own right or remember the titans but this yes. substitute teacher was a fan of the cinema and showed the us the birds. The bir no, the, birds. the Hitchcock movie. The Hitchcock Holy movie. My entire class. It's horrifying. Was it's a horrifying this, movie. It's. I I cannot believe this. I mean, maybe they were fired because it was a substitute. If the birds we never decided to do what they did in that Hitchcock movie, we would have more problems in America than we presently have. <laughs> Do you question which drill is more useful for soccer? All right, so we've got Carlisle United FC. This is third division soccer. We've got a foot drill and we've got a head drill. Let's see what we've got here. Let's start with the feet. <laughs> Wait, this is a real professional soccer team? This looks kind of fun. What? Just crab walking? I, I tiny, can see how this- Tiny goals? Yeah, right. Where did they get those tiny goals? Oh, 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 oh. That's hard to do. That's pretty useless, but it is physically hard to do, even though Mina has done something like that on this program. For some reason, she crab walked one time. <laughs> I don't know why she did. I know exactly. 
basically why we did it. It was at the beginning of quarantine and we had literally no sports to talk about. So we were fielding random questions from viewers. And one of the questions I wrote it down, I think it was, would you rather crab walk all the time or, or have crab claws crab for hands? Claws for hands. Okay. Do we have the I video mean, of- it... Okay, wow. Oh, all right, there, oh, there it is. Oh, it's a... <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> there it is. Oh, <laughs> we were so young then. Oh my Lord. <laughs> Baby on your chest. Oh, wow. I forgot about this. <laughs> All right. Look, um, I was look. so much better at this than you. Okay, listen to me. You, you narcissists need to get out of here calling for video from previous <laughs> shows <laughs> when we have not yet gotten to the head drill that Carlisle United FC was doing because you guys are throwing it. You're doing callbacks. Hey, you want to see other times that we were wacky? Let's go to the heads of these players out here. What, what is it? This is, I don't get this. Are they being, they're um, being other kinds of fish maybe? They're practicing how to get out of the trunk of a car if they're tied up using the muscles <laughs> to get out of a death-defying situation in the trunk of a car. ...responsibly, part of happy hour. Tonight on ESPN, College football, Arkansas State versus Appalachian State. That's a lot of enthusiasm for that particular game. So the University of Miami invented the turnover chain. It has spawned a great many copycats, some less subtle than others. So here we are going out to Arkansas State, where if you score a touchdown, you get a stash of... Well, I don't want to blow the punchline here. You get a stash of cash. There it is. Uh, you're just getting a whole bunch of cash. This is Odell Beckham uh, is banned for two years. I mean, we're getting less and less subtle. I mean, I, I don't know what the next step after that is. Uh, Pablo, are you intrigued? I am intrigued. I just want to point out that Odell Beckham was just banned from visiting LSU ever again because he dared to give away like $2,000, which I would say has a larger point about the hypocrisy of who gets paid in sports underneath it, but is mostly just hilarious because really $2,000, that's the grand sum of money that they actually gave out at that game. That's it. That was the headline, Odell Beckham. What they didn't give you in the headline was the hospital CEO embezzling money and making up a job for $180,000 for an offensive lineman's recruiting father who never showed up to work so that LSU could win a championship. Uh, Mina, are you intrigued? Well, that took a serious turn. I thought we were just going to crack a bunch of jokes about like turnover props and like fun things to give like, players on the sideline. I ruined it. I ruined I, it. I ruined I, it. I, I mean, I, 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 I think the bit has kind of gotten out of hand, by the way, with the, the turnover chains and the turnover canes. I saw a turnover top hat at the beginning of the season. How about a turnover turnover where they give you like an apple pie on the sideline? Or a turnover <laughs> turnover turnover where you get an apple pie and then they make your bed after the game. <laughs> that was really dumb. On a very small racetrack somewhere, Figure eight racing. Uh, not somewhere. Indianapolis, I am told. I am told that the producer assumed that this was in Russia because we get some sketchy video from Russia, but Indianapolis is providing the sketchy video this time. Feels like a metaphor in there. <laughs> I'm not oh, go. figure eight racing is going to be the Wait. obvious thing, right? Yeah, they're going to go past. The, it's going to be Whoa! this way. Yeah, yeah. This is figure eight racing. Yes, this is dangerous. This is uh, <laughs> wow. Yeah, that was a large crowd at the figure yeah. eight racing. People are starved for entertainment. I mean, are you intrigued? Uh, yeah, and you just identified like how insane 2020 is i was more unnerved by the size and density of the crowd than the insane thing that was happening on the track how about you pablo you intrigued i am not intrigued because we did not see a crash on that track and if there was a crash there is a 100 percent chance we would have used it so i'm guessing this is somehow actually not as dangerous as we might have thought Okay, the crash is coming, though. I think it stands to reason that the crashes are coming.
We're done here. If you want more Mina Kimes, the Mina Kimes show featuring Lenny is the podcast. Also find her on NFL Live. Pablo Torre, ESPN Daily. It's fun. Check it out. So you guys remember how earlier in the show Pablo was bragging about coining the term Fitz Magic? Because I did. Right? So, yeah, uh, did a little research. So here's Pablo's tweet from you 2011. Yeah, September yeah, 2011. I- iconic, yes. Ryan Fitz Magic. Yep. 201 likes. Look at that. The yeah. account was exploding. Right. So that was Nine 2011. Years ago, Jaden. Nine Let's years go ago. back to 2010. Yes. Yes, what do we have here to expose what? Pablo Torre as the Fitzmagic fraud that he is? Alyssa what? Jung, look at what? that, 2010, a full year before you, Pablo, you what? bum, you fraud, you what counterfeit Mitz, Fitzmagic person. Alyssa Jung, one of my own people did this.